So just like yesterday, this is the same math. The math itself is not changing, okay? And so um, one of the things that you really have to consider is the idea of when you're at the highest point, what do you have all of? When you're at the lowest point, what do you have all of? And so we're going to be just kind of filling in things we know, looking at the variable that's given. If it's height, then we have to use that probably in the GPE equation. If it's uh, velocity, then velocity is unique to the kinetic equation. So basically, seeing what you're given, seeing how you can use it, and then some of those kind of logic or concept things like, okay, how, how can I get extra information that's not given, where I don't have to do calculations, but what things can I figure out? If you're at the very bottom, you have no height, so how much potential can you have? Right, exactly, zero. Um, <coughs> if you're at the highest point, you're going to have all height, so you have all potential, so what do you have to have zero of? Yeah, because it's at that moment where you haven't started that motion or that motion is paused if you're changing directions or something like that. So some of those things are super important. And on the back, actually, this is like page one, but it has these hints. There's points where you have the highest, points where you have the lowest, and so think about what that means for your potential kinetic if you get stuck. So sometimes if it feels like you don't have enough information, it's just because you're not thinking of one of those kind of concepts or one of those ideas involved with conservation of energy where, you know, if you have all potential, you have to have no kinetic or vice versa. So sometimes people get stuck and they think, oh, I'm missing something. Um, and it's really, you just have to think of that, how that relationship between those two. Because we can't create energy and we can't destroy energy. So it's just transferring. So if you have all of something, you'd have to have none of the other. So let's take a look here. So just stay with me again. Um, you have all of that room down below to do your work. So um, make sure that you're still giving yourself this as a good example to follow. Um, so the mass is gonna be 50 kilograms. Obviously the mass is gonna stay the mass the entire system because we're not changing um, you know, this ball or whatever it is that's rolling um, along this track, okay? So the mass is gonna stay constant. I also see here that at position one, I have the height. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in now while I have it, right? So my height at position one is given. It was, it's four meters, right? It's right here, four meters. Height at position two is also given. It's, whoops, height is three meters. Right, so might as well fill that in as well. All right, if I look at three, what do you think my height's gonna be here? Good, I'm seeing a bunch of zeros. Zero meter. And then at position four, obviously height is not given, but guess what is? <coughs> here it says the velocity is six meters per second. So it's easy to miss that the velocity is given here, so it's nice to fill that in right from the get-go. Notice how I'm including the units for all of those. Now let's go and look, um, are there any energies that we could fill in just by understanding we're at the highest or we're at the lowest? So I see a height of zero, and you guys have already told me at a height of zero, so like position three, we would have zero joules of potential energy. Is everybody following me, right? You already told me that, so I'm just taking what you said and I'm putting that on, filling in what kind of what we know. Um, all right, so here is the highest position. So here you told me we have all potential and that we have to have zero kinetic. So we might as well fill that in. Does anybody see anything else that we could fill in? Or is it time to start doing some of our equations? Just equations. I don't. I don't see anything um, right off the get go that we can get filled in. All right. So I'm going to um, do my work here, and then I'm going to have to erase it because I can't slide my screen up and down um, without it making it real confusing. So I'm going to kind of do step by step, part one, and then I'll erase part two, and I'll erase. Obviously, please don't erase yours. Do the work and just kind of keep it 
like organized, like here's part one, part two, part three, part four, so that you can look back at this as an example later. So which variable, obviously we're given height. So which equation are we gonna use? Okay, so for part one, I'm gonna use my GPE equation of mass times gravity times height. Because I have my mass, which is 50. I have my gravity, which is what? 10. And I have my height, which is four. So what do I end up with here? What is my GPE? Cole, you have that? Okay, so that is 2,000. And I'm going to fill that in, right? That is my GPE. Now, what else can we do? We can do our total. And again, this ND is our total, so if you want to put the T for total, go for it. All right, so 2,000 plus zero is 2,000. What else can we now do? <coughs> The law of conservation of energy says that energy can never be created or destroyed. So if we have 2,000 joules, is that going to change? So we can fill that in for all of these. Nice. It's not looking so overwhelming now, right, when we start to fill in things. Do you remember at the very end of yesterday, what did we talk about? You have zero kinetic energy. What does that really mean you have zero of as well? Velocity. You have zero velocity because you have zero motion. So we went through that whole big old thing of filling in zero for kinetic and then one half times our mass and then setting it up for V squared, all to realize zero is what we end up with. And I said from here, so anytime you have kinetic energy that's zero, you have to have zero velocity as well. Is everybody with me so far? Do you understand where all of this has come from? So that's it for part one. We only really had to do one equation. So it looks a little intimidating, a little overwhelming, um, but it's just taking it piece by piece, step by step, and then it, it's not too bad. All right, so let's go over here now to part two. Okay, so part two tells me um, I have height and I have my total. So again, we're going to be using GPE because that's the very that's the equation that has height in it. So GPE equals mass times gravity times height again, where my mass is fifty. Gravity is still 10, but now my height is not 4, it is 3. So what has my GPE gone down to? It went at 2,000, now we've gone to this height. What do you get? 1,500. 1,500? Okay, so I'm going to fill that in. It's 1,500 joules. Okay. So now... <coughs> We have velocity and we have kinetic. Only thing in the kinetic equation that we have that is given to us is our mass, right? So all we have is the mass, and we have two unknown variables. So that's not gonna work. Um, so what other equation could we use to possibly find our kinetic? We can't use the kinetic to find the kinetic energy. Where else do you see kinetic energy? What other equation? Total mechanical energy. The total mechanical. So if I go total mechanical equals Ke plus Pe, my total is 2,000, my kinetic is what I'm trying to find, and my potential is 1,500 at position two. So how do I get Ke alone? Good, we're gonna do that subtraction on both sides because it says addition, we do the inverse, and so when I subtract 1,500, I end up with 500 for my Ke. So now I fill that in. And again, you should be able to do a quick check, add these two and you better get your total, and we do. So now I have kinetic, 
I was already given my mass, and so now I can solve for velocity. So I'm going to write Ke equals 1 half m times v squared, and I'm going to plug in what I know. I have 500. I have half of 50, and I'm going to times that by v squared. So I can't do anything with my 500, so I bring it down in my equal sign. What's half of 50? 25. Good, 25. And then we bring down our v squared. Again, we're trying to get v squared by itself, so how do we get rid of our 25? What do we do? Good, so the operation is multiplication. The inverse is, 20, or is division. So we divide both sides by 25, and what do we get? 20. And so we get 20 equals v squared, and we are one step away because it's not asking for v squared, it's asking for v. So how do we get rid of the square? Dylan? Square rooted. Fantastic. Square rooted to get v equals, and what is the square root of 20? Eight point nine. Eight point nine. Oh wait, no, no. no? Four point five. Four point five. Okay. All right. So let's fill that in. Four point five meters per second. And again, don't forget those units. Okay. Any questions on where any of that came from? Awesome. Okay, so let me give myself some room here. All right, so as I move on to my next part here, <clears throat> Well, as I look at this, I have zero height, which means we had zero potential. But if we have zero potential, what's it mean for our kinetic? We don't have to do any calculation. We should be able to look at that and see exactly what we have right now. The yeah, the kinetic has to be 2,000. <coughs> and if you get zero plus 2,000, you do get 2,000. Now, you could do the TME equation and you could figure that out, right? You could go um, TME equals KE plus PE, where your total is 2,000, your KE is unknown, and your PE is zero. <coughs> so the inverse of addition is subtraction, so minus zero, minus zero, and you're left with KE is 2,000. So the equation works, but you don't have to do the equation. If logically you know you have zero kinetic, or potential, excuse me, then you have to have all potential. Oh my gosh. If you have zero potential, then you have all kinetic. Let me get it right. And so um, if you're, you know your total, then by default you know your kinetic. So now we're just ready to set up to solve for velocity. All right, so Ke equals, man, we're getting really good at setting it up for velocity. <coughs> Right, so Ke equals, oops, uh, don't repeat it, fill it in. All right, so our Ke is 2,000 equals 1 half of our 50 times V squared. We bring down our 2,000. <clears throat> half of 50 is still 25. And... Just like we did before, we're getting rid of our 25 by doing that division. So what is 2,000 divided by 25? Because whatever we do to one side, the laws of algebra say we have to do to the other. Okay, so we get 80 equals V squared. Okay, does this one 8.9? Yeah. Okay, so to get rid of the square, we square root it leaving us with v, which is exactly what we're after, and we have to square root the other side, and it's 8.9. Okay? All right. Any questions?
question. Oh, all of it. No. All right, let me fill it back in real quick. Jeez Louise, when did you guys stop me? Two thousand zero. I knew I was gonna do it one time. I just didn't figure it'd be this early in the day. Okay, fifteen hundred. Zero, two thousand, five hundred. That's some really perfect. Thank you. P E zero, two thousand, two thousand and eight point nine. Who? Now, what did we have filled in? Two thousand. Okay. We also know that at position six, our velocity was six. Or position four, excuse me, our velocity was six. Okay. All right. Well, which equation has velocity in it? GPE or KE? KE. Okay. So for the KE, we have mass, and so we can actually calculate kinetic energy because we have the mass and we have the velocity now for the first time. So our KE is going to stay our unknown. We're going to take half of our 50 and we have to square our velocity. Now we just start simplifying. We bring down our KE and our equals. Half of 50 is still 25. And what is 6 squared? And what do we get when we multiply for our final simplifying step of 25 times 36? Okay. All right, so we're going to take 900 joules. Where do I go from here? Because I still don't have my height, and I still don't have my GPE, so I have to do something. Where am I going to go, Will? You have to subtract 900 from 2,000 and take the Okay, so we're going to use our TME, right? And so our total is 2,000, our kinetic is 900, and our PE is what we're trying to find. So this is addition, so we subtract both sides and end up with 1,100. And again, those parts, if you can see that and realize you're going to just subtract them, you don't have to write it all out. Like, I understand, like, if you're at the point where you can just see, okay, we're going to subtract those two to get the missing energy. I'm okay with that. Just like I'm okay with you not working out the whole velocity, figuring out it to be zero. Like, I get it. Like, I don't have to see all of the steps. Um, the ones that you actually are like, like this, it'd probably be good for you to actually write out. But if you're good and understand where this is coming from, I'm okay at this point with you not having to write out that. So what do we do? We are solving for height now, right? That's where we're at. Um, and so which equation are we going to use? We got height equals what? Height equals what? So if I go to my triangle and I cover up height, okay, everybody good with that? Height equals GPE over mass times gravity. And so our GPE is 1100, our mass is 50, and our gravity is 10. Again, do not forget to do that multiplication before you actually do your division. So 50 times 10 is 500. A lot of you still on that gold paper from the other day did 1100 divided by 50. Even if you wrote it like you multiplied by 10, you didn't actually divide with the 500. You divided by 50. So just be careful. So when you do 1100 divided by 500, what do you get, Emily? What is it? 2.2. Okay, so 2.2, and my units have to be included, which is the meter. <clears throat> it's a lot of steps. 
but none of them are hard. It's a great way to put the idea of conservation of energy all together where you can't create any energy, you can't destroy any energy. It's just a fluid, you know, fluctuation of those two forms. Any questions? Okay, for the next 10 minutes, I would like you to try the one on the front.